Hi, you've seen my previous projects with my New Canoe Frontier 12 where I used a Haswing Comax 12 volt 55 pound thrust trolling motor with a tiller bar on it that had the controls in it. So what I wanted to do was make this trolling motor steerable with foot pedals. I've already done a video showing you how I've mounted the foot pedals in this Frontier 12 and now I'm going to show you the final assembly of the trolling motor with the modifications. So right here is the completed turnbuckle with the eye bolts that I showed you previously. Uh, it's been painted black so it might be a little more difficult to see. Here the first piece is the fender washer along with the body of the turnbuckle and the eyelet. What I did add is these left-handed jam nuts, which are going to help to hold these eye bolts in position, and I'll explain why. Now, you can see that these control wires, which are made of Dyneema line, are crossed. And the reason for this is, because this has a 2 to 1 gear ratio uh, uh, turning setup inside the trolling motor, it takes more force to turn this motor. So in order to get that more force, I had to cross these lines in opposite directions initially. So you have the right side here going to the left side of the Frontier 12 in the existing pad eye, and on the same for the right side going to the left side in an existing pad eye. Now, one of the things you need to be careful of if you're going to cross these over is that you don't get any friction rubbing on these two lines at the crossover point. So what I did was a couple of things. The first thing is I adjusted each of these eyes so that there would be a gap in between these two lines. And that's why I needed the jam nuts to hold them into the positions that they're going to be in. And then I'll show you how I ran the lines, but basically what's going to happen is they're going to go through these two here, these pad eyes, and they're going to cross over again underneath the seat and be threaded to two other pad eyes, which then go to the foot pedals. And how I got the second crossover not to touch is by mounting the pad eyes under the seat on one side, one inch higher than the other, which gives the gap in between the lines. Here's a view looking forward from the trolling motor and you can see the first crossover there through the already installed Frontier 12 pad eyes and as I go a little bit further down you can see the second crossover along with the first pad eye on the left that I installed and the one on the right and you can see the one on the right is about one inch higher than the one on the left and that gives that second gap between the Dyneema lines. And the reason for that is because you need this second crossover so when you push on the right pedal you turn right and when you push on the left pedal you turn left. These are the parts you're going to need for the trolling motor steering arm. What I have here is two 5 16 double eye bolt turnbuckles as well as a piece of 5 16 times 18 piece of all thread which I made by just cutting the head off a bolt and a couple of 5 16 inch fender washers. Now if you look you can see these two little black marks I made on this side of the turnbuckles and what those are are the standard thread that you get which is tidy righty lefty loosey because with turnbuckles the other side is going to be an opposite thread. So if you want to use the all thread through the center, you got to make sure you use the standard threads. So this is going to be the first step. I'm looking towards the front of the boat and I'm looking at the top part of the Haswing Comax trolling motor and you can see that I have the tiller arm pointed all the way up so you can get a better idea of what you're looking at back here. The reverse switch is there along with all the power supply and directional 
LED lights. And you can see that white knob that goes through the center of the tiller arm there. That's the first thing you're going to remove. On the left side of the motor, as you're looking forward, there's this tightening knob. You're going to want to untwist that all the way. And then go over here to this side and remove the two screws, which I've already done. And that'll expose a nut and a cotter pin inside that are attached to the 5 16 inch threaded rod that goes through connecting these two pieces. Here's an exploded view of all the pieces when you remove that. And if you go up here, you can see now that you have a clear path through there and it disengages the tiller arm right here. Once you've disconnected the tiller arm from the trolling motor, what you're going to have here that connects the two is a coiled sheath wire containing the six control wires. Now, I've already done that, so you can't see it here, but I'll explain it to you. Now, since the wire is coiled, it has like an elastic effect. So before you cut it, you need to put a clamp on either side of the cut to make sure that it doesn't snap back into either the tiller handle or the trolling motor. And what I used was just a zip tie on either end before I made that cut. So inside the head and going into the tiller, you've got these six small color-coded wires. And they're about the size of telephone wires, and they're stranded. And what you're going to have to do is splice those to an extension wire. And what I chose is this Radio Shack six conductor telephone line cord because four out of the six colors in this cord match up to what you're going to need to splice into. And you can see this is the telephone uh, plug-in part which I ended up just cutting off. But this is perfect to use to splice in as an extension cord for your tiller arm. I decided to use the tiller arm with all the controls installed as my remote controller. And the reason for that was as I was trying to figure out how to open this to get to the circuits, it appeared to me that it was sealed shut and the only way to open it would be to break it. And I decided I didn't want to do that. So I came up with a little way to attach it to the seat base. So wherever I adjust the seat, I'll be able to have my controls with me. So using a homemade bungee kit, I just made this rod type holder that secures it to the seat base very sturdily. So it's not going anywhere. And then what I also did was in here, because there was a little bit of a gap, I filled it in with some marine goop just to make sure that no water would get in there. And then I also formed a little hook type attachment that will let me hang this off the stand-up bar when I want to use it when I'm stand-up fishing. And all I used for that was an old plastic hanger that I cut up. So this works really well. The only issue I would say with this setup is that I still have to go and push the button down if I want to use a reverse function in the trolling motor, which isn't too bad because this seat does rotate and I can get to it easily in this setup. But when I took the top off of the trolling motor, I saw that that circuit was tied in with all the forward LEDs and the power LEDs, and I decided that it wasn't worth ruining the motor or making a mistake just for something uh, for the reverse, because to be quite honest, I hardly ever use reverse anyways. Okay, so this is the finished product, and as you can see, I have my control stick right here, and I've got about 10 feet of extra line so I can move it around in the boat or put it on the stand-up bar. And it's all hooked up and as you can see if you look down at the trolling motor everything is fully operational so if you have any questions please leave them for me in the comments.